Welcome to Spiritual Calisthenics. Christ is in our midst. Today, on Thursday, September 7th, we commemorate the fourth feast of the Nativity of the Theotokos, St. Sozon the Martyr, St. Cassini the Hymnographer, Saints John and Sergius, Bishops of Lerna, St. Daniel Kutunagiotis of Smyrna, St. Evodos and Onisiphoros, the Apostles of the Seventy, and St. John the Wonderworker of Novgorod. Regarding St. Sozon the Martyr, this holy martyr was a shepherd in Lyconia, born a pagan named Tarasius. He received holy baptism and was renamed Sozon. Filled with zeal for the truth, he taught his countrymen to desist the worship of the idols. Once he entered the temple of Artemis in Campiopolis in Cilicia, cut off the golden hand of the idol, and break it in pieces distributed among the poor. When he saw that many were being unjustly punished for the theft of his own accord, he gave himself up to Maximian the governor, who was beat with rods until his bones were broken. According to some, he suffered martyrdom in 288, according to others in 304. Thy martyr, O Lord, in his courageous contest for thee, received as the prize the crowns of incorruption and life from thee, our mortal God. But since he possessed thy strength, he cast down the tyrants, and wholly destroyed the demon's strengthless presumption. O Christ God, by his prayer, save our souls, since thou art merciful. Regarding St. Cassini the Hymnographer, from the Orthros, that is Matins, on Great and Holy Tuesday. At Bridegroom Orthros, on Great Holy Tuesday evening, the Church chants the following beautiful and inspiring hymn written by St. Cassini. O Lord, the woman had fallen into many sins, perceiving thy divinity, fulfilled the part of a myrrh-bearer, and with lamentations she brought sweet-smelling oil of myrrh to thee before thy burial. Woe is me, she said, for night surrounds me dark and moonless, and stings my lustful passions with the love of sin. Accept the fountain of my tears, O thou who drawest not down from the clouds the waters of the sea, incline to the groanings of my heart, O thou who in thy flesh, in thine ineffable self-emptying, hast bowed down the heavens. I shall kiss thy most pure feet, and wipe them with hairs of my head. Those whose feet sound Eve heard at the dusk in paradise, and hid herself for fear. Who can search out the multitude of my sins, and the abyss of thy judgment? O Savior of my soul, despise me not, thine handmaiden. For thou hast mercy without measure. When regarding the whose feet Eve heard at dusk in paradise and hid herself in fear, we will get to in a moment, referring back to uh, the emperor and his relationship with Eve. This uh, glorious hymn, the hymn of Saint Cassini, which is chanted uh, most eloquently by chanters and choirs throughout uh, Christendom. Uh, is talking about the woman who wiped Jesus' uh, feet with her hair. And there is a juxtaposition between her and Judas Iscariot. St. Cassini the hymnographer and poet was born between 805 AD and 810 in the city of Constantinople into a wealthy family and grew to be exceptionally beautiful and very intelligent. Three Byzantine chronicles claim that she was a participant in the bride show, the means by which Byzantine princes, emperors, sometimes chose a bride giving a golden apple to his choice. Organized for the young bachelor emperor Theophilus, the iconoclast by his stepmother, the empress dowager Ephrosini. Smitten by Cassini and her beauty, the young emperor approached her and said, Through a woman came forth the baser things, referring to the sin and suffering coming as a result of Eve's transgression. Cassini promptly responded by saying, And through a woman came forth the better things, referring to the hope of salvation, resulting from the Incarnation to the Most Holy Theotokos. His pride wounded by Cassini's rebuttal, Theophilus haughtily passed her by and chose Theodora to be his wife. And Ginikos ta hiro. And her response was, Que Ginikos ta kritor. There are some that say that he rejected her because he could not marry someone that he found to be smarter than him. We next hear of St. Cassini in 843, when it is recorded that she founded a woman's monastery in Constantinople, becoming its first Egomonisa, abbess, and devoting her life to asceticism and the composing of liturgical poetry. The best known of her composition is the Doxostikon hymn of the Apostolic of the Bridegroom of Orthros for Great and Holy Wednesday, which is in parish churches chanted by anticipation on the previous evening. Holy tradition says that in his later years, the Emperor Theophilus, still in love with Cassini, wished to see her one last time before he died, so he rode to the monastery where she resided. Cassini was alone in her cell, writing her now famous hymn, when she realized that the commotion she heard was because the imperial retinue had arrived. Other uh, renditions of the story say that she was in the garden. 
Being now voted God in her monastic life, Cassini fled from her cell and hid, leaving the unfinished Tim on her writing desk. Theophilus was directed to her cell and entered it alone. Not finding Cassini, he turned to leave when he noticed papers on the desk and read what was written upon them. When he was done reading, he sat and added one line to the hymn, then he left, never to see Cassini again. The line attributed to the emperor is those whose feet sound Eve heard at dusk in paradise and hid herself for fear. When the emperor and his party departed from the monastery, St. Cassini returned to her cell, discovered what Theophilus had written, and finished the hymn now properly known as the Hymn of the Sinful Woman. St. Cassini was a Byzantine egumenista, poet, composer, and hymnographer. She is commemorated by the church September 7th. Approximately 50 of her hymns are extant, and 23 are included in the Orthodox Church liturgical books. The exact number, exact number is difficult to assess, as many hymns are ascribed to different authors in different manuscripts and are often identified as anonymous. In addition, some 789 of her non-liturgical verses survive. Many are our epigrams, or aphorisms, called nomic verses. An example, I hate the rich man moaning as if he were poor. Today we also celebrate the fourth feast of the Nativity of the Theotokos. From the root of Jesse and the loins of David the king, Mariam, the child of God, is born for our sake this day. Hence all creation exalts on its renewal. Both heaven and earth rejoice together now. Praise her, O you tribes of nations here and below. The righteous Joachim rejoices, and Anna keeps feast, crying out, The barren bears the Theotokos, the nourisher of our life. On this day, the Virgin and Theotokos Mary, the bridal chamber of the heavenly bridegroom, by the will of God, is born of a barren woman. Being prepared as the chariot of God the Word, she was preordained for this, and she is the divine gate and the true mother of life. St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all brethren who are with me, the churches of Galatia, grace to you, and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. So St. Paul is establishing in the opening remarks of his letter to the Galatians that he is not there on behalf of men. He is there on behalf of God. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Sicilia, and I was still not known by sight to the churches of Christ in Judea. The only heard it said, he who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. Then after fourteen years I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas taking Titus along with me. I went up by revelation, and I laid before them, for privately before those who were of repute, the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, lest somehow I should be running on or had run in vain. This is because, and this is one of the reasons why they glorified God, is because St. Paul... His plots are amazing. He was a Roman by birth because of where he was born. He was a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin and raised with the most extreme education. And so Gamaliel was his teacher. It was like having Stephen Hawkins be your teacher in, in physics. Uh, Paul had everything going for him. But for him to reject everything, he hated not only by the Romans, of which is like rejecting your citizenship, but also by the Jews or this persecuted people. The only way he could do that is if he truly believed, he truly had faith in what he was doing. But even Titus, who was with me, was not compelled to be circumcised, though he was Greek. But because of false brethren secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy out our freedom, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. To them we did not yield submission, even for a moment, that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. So this is because of the argument that was happening in the early church that said that some uh, argued that in order to become Christian, first you had to be a Jew, which means that you had to be circumcised before you could be baptized. Uh, St. Paul uh, argued mightily against that, and that's where a lot of uh, Galatians is going to be uh, discussing. From the Gospel according to St. Mark. At that time, Jesus came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gergesenes. And when he had come out of the boat, there met him out of the tomb a man of unclean spirits who lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, even with a chain. For he had often been bound with fetters and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart, and the fetters he broke in pieces. 
So demoniacs want to be in the den. That's where they want, because they want to kill us. Uh, and of course, demoniacs are able to exhibit great feats of strength. Uh, this is so that people will be afraid of them. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I abjure you by God. Do not torment me. Now, he's doing this in a mocking way because he does not truly believe that Jesus is God. He believes that he is the Christ. He believes that he is the chosen one, but he does not believe that Jesus is God. He knows that he has power, but if he knew that it was God, he would react differently. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And that's how it works with spirituality. We are never accosted with just one demon or one sin. It always starts sneaking up, sneaking up, sneaking up, until finally we're overwhelmed. You know, it's like watching a nature documentary where you see ants. One ant does nothing, but when you see a swarm of ants, they are able to take over uh, the element. The difference, of course, being is that we let demons in. We allow them to control us uh, with little things, little allowances, little slippery slopes, until uh, we find ourselves no longer doing the will of God, but following after our pride, after our uh, sins, and all of the other lusts of the body. And he begged him eagerly not to send them out of the country. Now a great herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, Send us to the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them leave. The unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. And the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. Which shows us that as the man was trying to kill himself, God was restraining the demons, not giving them full uh, authority to kill the man. But once they were in a pigs, they had nothing stopping them, and so they went straight to their death. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country. And people came out to see at what had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right man, the man who had had the legion, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told what had happened to the demoniac and the swine. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their neighborhood. And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with the demon begged him that he might be with him. But he refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all men marveled. So this man, who was formerly a demoniac, is now an apostle. He is now preparing the people to receive the disciples when they come back after the resurrection. So this man now has purpose. The demons don't want any purpose other than for you to be dead. Whether it's through addiction, whether it's through gambling, whether it's through video games, whether it's through anything that is basically killing your soul, killing your mind, taking you away from your loved one. And so it is our prayer that this does not befall us, that we are able to be cleansed to get rid of all of those things and follow after Christ Jesus. I hope that you've enjoyed today's spiritual calisthenics. Have a blessed and wonderful day.